Whether or not you want to believe it, and regardless of what angle you look at it, manifestation is actually backed by neuroscience. But before we even touch on the neuroscience, I want us to zoom out for a second. Because the idea of manifestation did not start on TikTok. It didn't start with vision boards, and it definitely didn't start in the self-help section of your favorite bookstore. Interestingly, versions of manifestation actually show up in nearly every different culture and belief system. In Abrahamic religion, it looks like prayer, displaying faith in Christianity as that of which moves mountains, or the importance of intention in Islam when it comes to making outcomes happen, and within Buddhist and Hindu philosophies which focus on visualization. And across indigenous cultures, there is also this idea that attention, story, and belief shape reality. Not just symbolically, but practically. And even if we want to draw it back to the ancient philosophers, thinkers like Aristotle and the Stoics regularly talked about how inner experience or belief shapes outer perceived reality. And the core claim that I'm going to be making is not only that these are all different versions of the same thing, but that we now have the scientific evidence and tools available to study how it works. Because it does work. Which really broadly ties back to my wider idea that science is just the mechanism through which spiritual practice is made possible. So with that frame in mind, let's talk about the brain. Starting off with the fact that your brain is not objective, and that's kind of the point. We like to think that we are experiencing reality as it is, but in reality, we're not. And if you want a bigger deep dive on this one, go back to my Everything We Know Is A Lie series, the part on evolution. And based on that, we know that the brain is not passively observing the world, it is actively predicting it. Which is why neuroscientists often describe the brain as a prediction machine. Through the course of our evolution, it has been wired to ask questions like what's about to happen, what do I need to prepare for, and what can I draw from this? And then the predictions or conclusions that you come to from those questions is dependent on your past experiences, your worldview, your religious background, your cultural background, beliefs about yourself, beliefs about other people, basically beliefs all the way down. And once a prediction is made, your brain starts to act like it is already true. But now beliefs are not just thoughts, they are instructions. And this is where things start getting interesting. There is a network in your brain called the reticular activating system. It is its job to decide what in your environment you notice slash what is relevant to you. Because at any given moment, there are millions of different possible stimuli that you can be giving your attention to. So the reticular activating system is essentially meant to help streamline that attention or focus onto that of which is relevant for your survival and reproduction. So it essentially acts as a filter, a filter that is guided by belief which is also how we fall into things like confirmation bias, which we've talked about in the Art of Critical Thinking video. If you believe I am not good enough, or I will never get a job, or I don't have enough money, or no one will ever love me, your brain is going to go out into the world seeking information that is confirming of that view and ignoring information that isn't. Not because it hates you, but because it wants to be efficient and consistent with your existing self-concept. It's your brain basically saying, okay, cool, this is the model of reality that we are working with. Let's prove it right. Because again, as humans, we like to be right. Which brings us to Hebb's law. Neurons that fire together, wire together which is basically created to help us understand how the brain learns and creates associations between things, but is also relevant when it comes to repetition and things like affirmations, as it helps us essentially rewire the beliefs that inform our reticular activating system. Every time you repeat a thought, especially one with an emotion attached to it, you strengthen that neural pathway by means of the association between the emotion you feel and the belief that you're instilling. Again, neurons that fire together, wire together, which is why it also feels so much easier to remember things that are emotionally relevant to you. And with this repetition, over time, it becomes faster, more automatic, and less conscious, until eventually it stops feeling like a thought and just starts to feel like a reality or like who you really are. Manifestation at this level isn't about wishing. It's about rewiring your brain to expect positive outcomes before it expects negative ones. And if you're still fairly doubting the power of belief change, there have been numerous recent studies that go to show that belief changes can actually measure biological outcomes. Now, as always, I'm gonna be popping all of the studies that have been discussed in the sources in the description below. 
but the placebo research has essentially shut down this debate on the utility of belief change. There have been numerous studies that go to show that in pain-related placebo trials, participants who received placebo pills thinking that they were getting pain relief showed a decrease of activity in pain processing regions of the brain, increased activity in the prefrontal cortex, and the pain signals literally being dampened at the spinal cord. And here's the crazy part. When researchers block or disrupt the prefrontal cortex, the placebo effect disappears, meaning belief isn't just in your head. It's actively changing top-down brain signaling, which in layman's terms means that your expectations are talking to your nervous system. Expectations change effort, and effort changes outcomes. The way that your brain works is very economical. If it predicts failure, it withholds resources because why waste energy? But if it predicts success, then it mobilizes resources, which affects motivation, persistence, learning speed, stress tolerance, and how you interpret the setbacks. So when people say manifestation worked for me, what they often mean is my expectations changed and my behavior then followed. As we were talking about with the reticular activating system, if your beliefs are informing you to constantly be vigilant of the opportunities or possible pathways to the thing that you want, going after that thing will feel so much more natural and so much easier because you're now noticing every single opportunity to get that thing that is thrown at you and you now have the self-belief to go after them. But having this understanding of manifestation as both belief and action is so crucial because a lot of people think that manifestation is just believing things into existence and it's not. If that were the case, you could easily tell children in war-torn countries to just manifest survival, but you can't because more often than not, they don't have the actions available that would be necessary in order to survive. But also because a regulated nervous system is crucial to this belief change component. And that's because when you're stressed or hypervigilant, your brain is in defense mode, which means it's not concerned about updating beliefs, it's concerned about protecting them. Conversely, when you have a regulated nervous system, slower brain waves make the brain more flexible, open to new associations, and better at updating emotional memory. Which is why things like meditation, reflection, journaling, visualization, and all of those things consistently show up in, I guess, discussions around manifestation, but also around other belief systems like Buddhism and Hinduism. Not necessarily because they're mystical, but because they create the right conditions for change. But the real takeaway here isn't that you can think yourself into a perfect life. Not to say that you can't, just saying that's not the point. It's that your brain is always learning whether you are aware of it or not and that your brain is constantly noticing and paying attention to that of which is already embedded within your belief system, whilst ignoring all of that which is not. Every thought you repeat, every expectation you rehearse, every story you tell yourself about who you are, that is essentially what your nervous system is now becoming fluent in. So the question really isn't, does manifestation work? It's what beliefs about myself, about the world around me, about others, Am I unconsciously practicing day on day? And do those beliefs serve me in becoming who I want to be? Because that is what's manifesting. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, if you enjoyed, please hit like and subscribe so that I can continue making my silly little videos. Um, and I love you guys. I'll see you guys next week.